Hi there, hello friends, my name is Swoop and welcome to the Sus Pool, the place where everything and everyone is sus, maybe even us. <laughs> Come on in, the water's fine. Dude, okay, so this is the second ever video on this new second channel and I have to say, we're already at 95,000 subscribers here. Y'all, that is so wild. I am so honored to have you all here. Thank you so much for writing with me. We have some amazing things uh, coming soon to this channel as well as my main channel. So please allow me like one more slightly robust intro for the second video ever here. And then it will be shorter intros in the future. Okay, yay. <laughs> if you found this channel from my main channel, Swoop, hi, welcome. This is, this is kind of like a safe space where Auntie Swoop can rest her damn brain, okay? Together we can be a little more relaxed with some stories than we are on my main Swoop channel. You know, over there, my aim is for extensive documentary deep dives where I wear my thorough bitch hair and really try to sink my teeth into the stories with thorough investigations done by me and my team. The sus pool though, the sus pool, the... The sus pool, yeah, she a scoundrel. She hit different, you know what I mean? This is where I wanna like, yeah, you know, a little bit and talk about some of the grifters, con artists, slime bags, slime sack of grifter ball bags. I can cover those stories more succinctly and quickly here doing real time research with all of you. You get a little insight into my process of how I start to approach things when I'm doing the full investigative deep dives. There's actually a lot that goes on behind the scenes on my main channel. Like a lot of red tape, you would be quite surprised. Uh, legal stuff, a lot of redaction of info we have to constantly navigate. That's, oh man, that's, yeah. Things I have to keep private to keep witnesses safe. It is a lot to balance and there's no complaints here. It's very fulfilling work for me as a human trying to contribute quality over quantity, which is why I spend a lot longer time. I don't post quite as often uh, over there. But you know, all I can do is hope that it maybe helps someone along the way. Honestly, y'all, I'm still figuring this new channel out. So let me know in the comments uh, what you'd like to see. I'd like this to be more interactive with all of you. And yes, I did hear you. I am looking into doing a full Dance Moms doc uh, on my main channel, if the platform will let me do that. So stay tuned. Actually, I wanted to ask, would y'all be into some weird, spooky, bizarre, mind-bending mystery sh let me know in the comments as well. That's something I've been thinking about for like over a year now being able to do. So with that, there is a brand new doc that is coming to my main channel in a couple of days from now. Uh, it'll be probably Monday or Tuesday and it's on a very highly requested topic. Y'all have been asking me for weeks to cover this and so it is coming as well as the fall winter holiday apparel collection. I cannot wait for y'all to see this collection. It is honestly my favorite one that uh, I've done. So I cannot wait for you to see that. I will be launching the new collection in the new Swoop Doc on my main channel. If you're not subscribed there, it'll be linked down below and probably in the pinned comment as well. Okay, thanks for entertaining my long intro one more time. Let's get to today's story and dive into the cesspool. So did y'all catch the recent update on Maddie Russo? <laughs> No? Yes? No? Okay, well, for those of you who don't know, this is Maddie Russo. Yes, Maddie Russo, a TikToker who graduated from North Scott High School in Iowa back in 2021 with a 4.0 GPA, well, way to go, who became infamous on TikTok after clips like these started going viral. And now that I think about it, getting a 4.0 GPA really does not indicate if someone's gonna make smart decisions with things that they do. Okay, I don't know, okay, yeah, let's keep going. My name is Maddie Russo, and this is my story. So, when my older brother, Tyler, turned 18 years old, he was diagnosed with type one diabetes, which is a chronic autoimmune disease where the pancreas no longer produces insulin on its own. With this being said, I was also tested to see if I would develop type one diabetes and see if I was positive for any of the antibodies. So when the test came back, um, I ended up being positive for all five out of five antibodies. Now, if you know, you know, but even if you don't know, here is some backstory. Even as far back as when she graduated high school, there was a lot of ink being spilt in Maddie's local news media that she was somebody living with stage two pancreatic cancer at the age of 19, which is something she allegedly discovered after being diagnosed with type one diabetes. Now, first of all, I mean this with every fiber of my being, f cancer, just 
full stop, f off, literally cancer, can and should get cancer and f***ing die. Okay, now back to the story. Over time, Maddie used the notoriety that she received as a teenage cancer survivor to make TikToks like these. So it's my week off chemo, so I've just been doing um, radiation. However, I've kind of came down with this fever. It's been really weird because I don't, I don't feel like sick. I don't really have like a cold or um, like sore throat, any of the other symptoms. And like she even managed to leverage her status into professional speaking engagements with places like the National Pancreas Foundation or Project Purple, which is a pancreatic cancer organization. Uh, she was a guest speaker at St. Ambrose University. All of this public goodwill resulted in Maddie creating a GoFundMe that managed to raise nearly $38,000 in her fight against pancreatic cancer. Now people really love loved and supported this girl. And I mean, like, what? Like, why wouldn't you? Like, what, you know what I mean? Like, she was a teenager living with stage two pancreatic cancer, allegedly. Now, if you really aren't familiar with this story, you probably think I am being mean by dropping allegedly in here, except. <laughs> I have to share this with you guys. What? One of my friends just sent me this news article from her hometown. This girl right here, her name is Maddie Russo. She's 19 years old and this is her GoFundMe, Maddie's fight against pancreatic cancer, $37,000 raised so far. This is the report for her arrest. She was charged with theft when she received over $37,000 in donations for a false cancer claim. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, trust me, we're just getting warmed up here. It says this process is not short, but years ahead. Yet she's still smiling, even with feeding tubes and IV poles. Let me show you the pictures. Here's our girl with her feeding tube that's not primed. Looks like TPN. Let's go closer to her nose. Is that the end of the feeding tube? <laughs> what is going on with that chest port? I am not a chemo nurse, but this doesn't look like a port to me. The dressing is really screwed up. To me, it's giving G-Tube vibes. This was on her GoFundMe. That was a video by a TikTok creator named Scrub Hacks, who is an RN, a registered nurse. She, her content is so, like it's so amusing and it's so insightful into that whole world and that profession. I highly recommend it uh, if you're looking for someone to follow on TikTok. But she is not the person who exposed Maddie Russo, but she's one of the most like notable TikTokers who has discussed this like very, very, very early on in its iterations. Uh, I think obviously because of her medical background, I think that was really helpful. Uh, but to my knowledge, the people who actually did expose Maddie officially uh, remain anonymous. After learning last week that a football size two tumor is attached to her spine. She's trying to make sense of what is going on. A football sized tumor on your spine? She was given an 11% survival rate for five years. So we're gonna take it back a few months of this year. On January 23rd, 2023, Maddie was charged with theft by means of deception, which is a class C felony. Now class, you might be asking, what is a class C felony? And I looked it up to find out that a class C felony carries a potential sentence of up to 10 years in prison, at least in this state. Uh, this is according to Iowa state law. Now. This is this is kind of wild to me. Dear old Maddie was pulled out of a class at St. Ambrose to be questioned and then arrested. Like, can you literally imagine you're in class with this girl who's become kind of famous for beating cancer and then she's called out of class and arrested for faking cancer. Like I just, bitch, I don't even know why or how we got here in this world of this universe, but here we are, this is happening. So case in point, here's her mugshot. Like, I'm so curious, what do you think was going on in her mind right there? Like, what are those eyes saying? Like, is she just like, OMG, what's the big deal? All I did was fake having a horrific illness that millions of people suffer horribly from and grift $40,000 for it. Like, it's no big deal, whatever. I don't know why I slipped into that voice, but we're going with it. Now, according to the press release on her uh, arrest, quote, subpoenas for medical records were obtained where it showed that Madison had never been diagnosed with any kind of cancer or tumor from any medical 
medical facilities within the Quad Cities or surrounding cities. Now, Eldridge Police said in uh, their press release, quote, witnesses who have medical experience who also wish to remain anonymous sat with the investigating officer on January 11th and pointed out many medical discrepancies found on her pictures posted on her social media sites. So by that press release, it sounds like medical people who know their sh anonymously went and were like, hey, can we can we talk? We need to talk about this. Now, police added, quote, it was discovered through investigation that separate and apart from the medical discrepancies and from the GoFundMe page, Madison accepted private donations from other businesses, nonprofit organizations, school districts, and private citizens. The names of the victims will not be released at this time as we are still trying to collect the information from all victims. So she was literally like, hey, I'm just gonna like fake having one of the most horrific illnesses imaginable that so many people suffer for that should not have to suffer and they do and it's awful I'm gonna just pretend to have that set up a GoFundMe but you know what the GoFundMe is not gonna be enough for me nah bitch see you know I'm gonna have to have some nonprofits donating to me I'm gonna have to have some private citizens perhaps dabble in the donations so that I can what really like Anyways, so the Scott County authorities uh, also seized $33,000 from three different bank accounts belonging to Maddie and a family member. So they were just like, you know, just like snatched. They just saw the money and they're just like, boop, it just snatched. Bop. And like, dude, you want to know what's so f***ed up? I mean, like aside from this whole entire story. So the photos of Maddie at a hospital, those were actually taken at her apartment, LOL. Oh, and the, the whole hair loss thing? Well, hang on a second. Here's Mad Maddie talking about how she kept her hair through chemo. I wanted to share was how I am keeping my hair um, during treatment with chemo and radiation. I think it's really been helping because it's like unmedicated. So um, here's the uh, packaging of that. You can just order it online. It comes with like a three month supply. Um, I started this right away when I started treatment. And then soon after treatment, my mom found this. Um, it's biotin with collagen and keratin. Wait, you mean just some generic Rogaine and biotin? That was, uh, wow, just why the f haven't you told everyone this? You mean all of these people legitimately battling illness since many of them fighting for their lives could have just kept their hair if they just did that? I the idea of somebody legitimately fighting illness and seeing a post like this and not knowing it's a lie and then having this false sense of hope that that might be some like simple solution pisses me off so much. But you know, she later posted a photo of her hair loss. Let me pull that up real quick. Oh, right. Okay, 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 okay. So you just like, it just like took a couple of inches off the bottom. Is that what I'm understanding here? I mean, if she hadn't dampened her hair before cutting it, we might not have seen the scissor lines. So obviously but okay yeah fantastic amazing wonderful incredible awesome talented brilliant incredible amazing show-stopping spectacular never the same put it in a blender shit on it vomit on it eat it give birth to it now some of the photos maddie used were stolen from other cancer patients directly i cannot think of something more fucking disgusting. Like, I'm just like, what in the actual whole grain, gluten-free, do not pass go, do not collect $200, bitch, straight to jail for you. Like, <sighs> I'm saying phrases and I'm kind of laughing sometimes throughout this because I'm so pissed, like the story is so vile to me. But yeah, let's, let's take a little bit of a deeper look. This is the photo Maddie used on her social media. Uh, this is the actual photo that she took and stole and decided to use on her own social media. Oh, can you? Oh, oh I am in a rage. Y'all see how frizzy my hair is getting? That's how, oh, I man, I just holy fall back. Hey, I just, I don't even, there literally, there are, there's just no words. Like there's actually, there's actually no words. The face, this face says it all, okay? This is the face that everyone should have in regards to looking at these photos side by side, cause wow. This is a photo she took and used on her social media, drained from chemo era. That literally, 
I want to slap her. Oh my gosh, if you slap, then this might be the first time that I co-sign, allegedly, okay? I don't, I don't, please don't go sl slapping people, but m listen, in a parallel universe where Swoop's like, yeah, okay, we should be slapping some people upside the head. You might just, this might be one of those opportunities. Um, wow. On your right is the photo she stole and put on her own social media about her getting blood. Uh -uh. On the left is the actual photo. Uh-uh, y'all. See, see, like when you look at just these side-by-sides, it just makes this story so much more, okay, the suspul, suspul, just, mmm. Clearly this girl does not know about Google reverse image searches. Listen, listen, Ms. RN over here coming with the medical facts and the Google <laughs> reverse image facts, yes. Now, as you can see, uh, some of the photos uh, she seemed to stage and some she just flat out stole. Uh, that one where she was drained from chemo, yeah, that ain't Maddie at all. That was actually stolen from an Instagram public page belonging to an actual cancer survivor named Jessica. According to KWQC Jessica, who was in recovery after being diagnosed with ovarian cancer at the age of 20, my gosh, had never met Maddie and felt violated. Quote, I was shocked to find out someone used my images falsely for their personal gain. Survivorship is very difficult emotionally and this really hit me hard. I was very vulnerable and she exploited that. I feel violated. I'm so offended that she used me and others and allegedly lied about cancer. It also appears that she gave out false information in hope about how she saved her hair during treatment. Cancer patients are vulnerable and if someone is online claiming good results, they might try it not knowing it's a lie. What she is accused of doing is so hurtful and offensive to anyone that went through cancer. And I obviously couldn't say it any better myself um, because this doesn't affect me in the same way that it does, Jessica. But, uh, you know, just a side note, I lost someone very special uh, to me to cancer. And if I found out that someone was using photos of them to grift like this, I... <laughs> I would do something that I'm not allowed to say on the platform. So standing ovation to Jessica for beating the shite out of cancer and speaking out, you are a true, true warrior. Now, remember how there was the whole GoFundMe grift element to this story? Well, GoFundMe issued a statement saying, quote, GoFundMe has a zero tolerance policy for misuse of our platform and cooperates with law enforcement investigations of those accused of wrongdoing. All donors have been refunded and we have removed this fundraiser. The organizer has all also been banned from using the platform for any future fundraisers. GoFundMe's giving guarantee offers a full refund in the rare cases when something isn't right. This is the first and only donor protection guaranteed in the fundraising industry. So with all of that context in mind and the fact that most of Maddie's original TikToks now obviously don't exist, let's look at another one of Scrub Hack's TikToks. This girl Amanda sent me this private message between her and Maddie. So Amanda had a lump on her breast and had said something on social media about it. This was Maddie's response to her. Praying for you, girl. I know it's so scary and fearful. I know. It's so scary. You don't know shit. And you should be thankful for that. That's what like really pisses me off is like, why would you pretend to have something so awful? Why would you do that? Why? Why would you do that? And then you act like you understand it. And then down here, if you do get the dreaded C word and want to talk, I am here. Want to talk. What you gonna talk about, Maddie? How to grift on GoFundMe for something you don't have? Is that what you're getting? This is the girl we should be talking about. Her name is Charlie. This is her family. She actually did pass away from cancer. And apparently she had talked to Maddie mm. to get her through her own cancer. That wasn't real. It's just heartbreaking. Like it's honestly so heartbreaking. And I, I hope this, I don't know if this is gonna sound weird. I hope that Charlie never found out about Maddie. That's what I hope. And I hope that Charlie's family never finds out about Maddie. Thoughts and prayers go out to this family. My thoughts and prayers go out to Maddie's family, especially if they didn't know. Oh my gosh, that's a really good point, right? What if Maddie's family just honestly didn't know and and they're just didn't know that Maddie was lying about all of this and genuinely thought somehow this was that she was really sick. Can you imagine them going through that stress <laughs> for no reason? Here's the picture with her port again. Port. The picture with her port in a new spot. 
got a new little friend this week, a central line. Not sure how I feel about it. I wouldn't know either with a fake central line. <laughs> I'm telling you, um, follow, follow this, uh, follow her TikTok account. Um, it's really entertaining. Uh, she's really entertaining and very insightful as well. I'm wondering if this is actually her in the, in the photo because this is another picture she posted. I, I can't get over this one. This is the one that sealed the deal for me. I literally don't have words for how f***ing disgusting this is. Like, I'm sorry, dude, but people like this should be banned from ever having access to social media, like, ever again. Like, I never say that about people. I, well, I probably have said it about... Okay, I'm thinking about all the people that I've covered in my deep dive. Yeah, some of them shouldn't either, but I usually don't ever say that about people, uh, even about, you know, like, I don't know, horrid politicians that I don't like. But this, like, if you're capable of doing all of this, of stealing actual survivors' stories and photos, speaking at conferences, if she's willing to do all of that with a damn smile, then I'm just like, what else might she do when people forget? So it's just like, nah, sis, to the cesspool with you, okay? No internet allowed. You were taking the full plunge. You ain't dipping your toes. You're taking the full plunge. In your local headlines tonight, Eldridge police have arrested a local teenager for allegedly using false medical claims to raise more than $37,000. Officers say 19-year-old Madison Russo stole the money from more than 439 donors with false claims that she suffered from acute lymphoblastic leukemia, stage 2 pancreatic cancer, and a tumor the size of a football. Now, according to Heavy.com, Maddie was released from the Scott County Jail on a $10,000 bond and actually ended up pleading not guilty uh, to the charge of first degree theft in before February of this year. And that was before switching her plea to guilty in June, just a couple of months ago. Her sentencing happened on October 20th, 2023, which is what revitalized the story. I'd actually investigated this story of uh, months and months and months ago uh, and then kind of tabled it and seeing that sentencing's actually happened here this is why I'm covering it now. Now, get this, like during the sentencing, the defense called Dr. Christina Pyatt's, a forensic psychologist who had interviewed Maddie and determined that Maddie Russo had, quote, no mental health history, no criminal history, no childhood trauma or no substance abuse, uh, and is not a criminally minded person. And basically there was no excuse for what she did. Now, Maddie's defense attorney, Andrea Jager, claimed that Maddie was, quote, the first to admit that she made a terrible mistake. <laughs> Why do people keep, I don't understand. There's so many instances and so many stories that I cover, like people using the word mistake. Why do they use mistake when it's like, this is not a mistake. You did not trip over the rug and like hit the, you know, the, the edge of the sofa and knock someone's glass over. You didn't accidentally, you know, bump the milk. Do people still spill milk like across the table? I feel like that was like always like the thing when you're a kid and you're just like, oh, the milk. Ah. That's a mistake, right? Or you, you, you say something that sounds like one way and you meant it another and then it's just, it's, those are mistakes. This? Not a mistake. This was a choice, right? Isn't it a choice? It was a choice. It was a choice. She was like, let me do. And then she carried it on for a long time. She didn't like, oops, I accidentally downloaded someone's photos and oops, I accidentally uploaded it to my own. No, this is not a mistake. I just, man, people really be wearing that word out. But yeah, anyways, her attorney said it was a terrible mistake and that she feels genuine remorse and wants to move on. And I'd wonder would that remorse have set in if no one found out. Holy mother I don't know. And they also said that the reason Maddie made up her cancer was to quote, bring her family back together with a shared struggle they could deal with together. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, mm, there are just, again, I'm just, I'm like, I'm so pissed. I'm so enraged by this. The idea that someone's like, you know what? I want to bring my family back together. I'm not going to do it with therapy. I'm not going to do it with self-help books. 
or conversation or uh, you know I'm not gonna do it by any uh, tried and true healthy means necessary no I'm just gonna fake having a devastating illness apparently just traumatize any of my family members that are around that are gonna care and uh, make a bunch of money off of it in the process All right, so I'm gonna take a quick look at the statement that Maddie actually gave in court after all of this went down. Your Honor, first and foremost, I want to thank the court for the opportunity to speak today in front of you all. The opportunity. I'm sure she's so thankful. Let, I'm sorry, my pettiness is trying to squeeze out of me right now. Let me listen. I have not spoken this entire time while my case was ongoing for several reasons. So this is difficult to talk about but I'm just gonna try my best. This is difficult to talk about, Maddie? What's that? Oh, is that consequences for your actions calling? Is that, is that what this is? Is that, mm. Um, this experience, sorry, has been by far one of the most difficult things to navigate in my life. What does this mean? What does this mean? This experience, this experience has been the most difficult for you to navigate, the experience of getting caught or the experience of faking having cancer and setting up GoFundMes and speaking at the pancreas society like what what was the what is the most difficult experience here having to lie to everyone or getting caught for it and now having to read a statement in front of a judge it has been very scary and challenging in more ways than one you know what's scary and more challenging in more ways than one having actual f cancer i fully acknowledge that what i did was wrong and I am incredibly sorry. I hope that that is sincere. Ultimately, at the end of the day, none of us will ever know. I hope for her sake that that's genuine. And I hope that if any of the people who were directly affected by her, meaning people like whose images she stole, if they saw this, if her making that statement gives them some type of peace, then really that's all that matters, right? If there was anything I could do to take it back, I would. The reality is that I can't. The only thing I can do is correct it, learn from it, and move forward. I beat myself up about it the whole last year in silence because I didn't know how to tell anybody what was going on. Okay, I'm gonna stop right there. The, the reasons are probably obvious. Um, if y'all wanna see the thing in full, uh, by all means, uh, check it out. I'm gonna just stop right there. Um, Cause it, in my opinion, it starts getting into uh, woe is me and here's why I'm the victim. And I just don't have time for that today. Maybe if this was a full swoop documentary, but right now, absolutely f no. Okay, the sus pool means I get to cut the off when I feel like it and I'm not gonna play the entirety of that. Now the whole sentencing lasted less than one hour with the judge telling her exactly what he thought. It's absolutely clear to the court that you engaged in a lengthy course of deceit. Today, you indicate uh, my initial reaction, quite frankly, was this lengthy course of deceit was motivated by greed um, or perhaps social media fame. And he didn't stop there. Like he went on to list the events that she continued to take part in. It is abundantly the case that this was not an isolated or momentary lapse in judgment. Uh, you were bold enough to be interviewed by the North Scott Press regarding your cancer. You frequently appeared on social media concerning your supposed cancer. You went so far as to sp speak to the National Pancreas Cancer Foundation. I understand you speak to student, spoke to students and donors at St. Ambrose University. You spoke to actual cancer groups. Uh, you made many appearances, public and on social media, to push your fraudulent scheme. At any step along that way, you could have stopped. You, you, you could have stopped. Uh, it did not stop I until you were caught. Yep, it didn't stop until you got caught. That part. Now, in the end, the judge agreed with the plea deal and Maddie was sentenced to 10 years in prison. But, and that's a big, thick, but, thick with three to five C's. 
I don't even know if people write that word anymore. It is a suspended sentence. So she's not actually going to prison <laughs> on top of three years of probation with the terms of her probation being uh, she has to pay the restitution of $39,385.79 in full. Uh, she also must commit no other crimes, which is We'll see how that goes. Uh, do 100 hours of community service and pay an additional $1,370 fee. Now, I'm so curious, what do y'all think about this type of judgment? Do you think this was fair? Do you think she should have done time? Do you, uh, yeah, let me know what you think. But before all of that, Maddie actually had the audacity to ask that this judgment be deferred, which would have meant that it would not be placed on her record. But the judge ain't about that life, and I think, thankfully, so. But I am firmly convinced here today that it would not be remotely just to defer judgment in this case and allow you to proceed further in life uh, without uh, the consequence of this criminal conviction for theft on your record. You con you're continuing, you engaged in a continuing criminal scheme that lasted for a year that requires more serious punishment of that and that that will serve as a deterrent uh, to both you and others similarly situated. With the full details out of the way now, it is still clear that no matter what the judge thinks or Maddie says, I think this was and always will be about her getting attention. She wanted attention, maybe from her family at first, but as friends and social media and organizations started giving her praise and notoriety, I think it spiraled into something much more devious, even sinister, if you will, uh, where she not only got the attention she wanted, but temporarily made a profit from these lies at the the expense of I don't even know how many other people I, I can't even fathom I mean I do feel for her for having issues with her family somebody might say well, what family doesn't it still doesn't excuse what she did here and it's really troubling and the thing is things like these have lasting effects on real victims and people in need everywhere I mean think about the people whose images Maddie stole and think about the people who genuinely need financial aid from places like GoFundMe to help pay for their very expensive treatments that insurance doesn't cover because healthcare is yeah, stories breaking like this one put those very real people in need at risk of not being believed and not getting donors and help. And that is a huge problem. Adding any amount of doubt to charitable donations has an enormous and unknown impact for, it could be indefinitely, but Maddie, probably never considered any of that, did she? No, regardless of her ignorance, she likely only ever thought about herself. Now, ultimately, Maddie is still young, so hopefully she learns from this. I do believe people can learn. We have to believe that, otherwise, what the f are we doing? I don't know if she will. I don't, there's something in there that would, I don't know. What are your thoughts? Leave me your thoughts in the comments. I would love to hear what you think. And, you know, ultimately for me, if she doesn't learn, if she tries something like this again, I hope that someone just, just like the authorities in those bank accounts, I hope someone just snatches the internet right out of her hand so she cannot do this again. So that's what I got. I will have a new full deep dive swoop documentary coming out on my main channel in a couple of days. So make sure you are subscribed to my main channel linked below. Thank you for coming along for the ride. Make sure to subscribe to this new channel. Follow me on Instagram. We just hit 100,000 followers over there, y'all. We did it. Thank you so much. It is amazing time over there. And let's now get it to 150,000. I love the community that we are building together. Also follow me on Twitter. That's actually where I get a lot of topic requests that I follow through on. Uh, uh, so tell your friends and let's see who's next up in the cesspool. Bye.